everyone, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working with Topaz Studio 2. Now, I'm working right from Topaz Studio 2 in this, on this uh, tutorial. I'm not going from Photoshop. We're working straight from uh, Topaz Studio 2. But I have this image right here, and it's a really cool image of this barn right here. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool to turn this into a painting? But I thought, are there ever times, and I know this happens to me, where you're kind of uninspired. You don't know which direction to take an image. Well, there's a really cool uh, feature inside of Topaz Studio 2, and that's called Looks. Now, whenever you purchase Topaz Studio 2, you're going to get a whole bunch of looks that come with it. And they're designed to give you inspiration. So you can click on different looks and you might say, hey, I like that. I want to take my image in this direction. It's not quite 100% right for me, but I know I can get in there and change it up, alter it, add to it, take away from it, whatever. And so, but the looks are all about inspiration. They'll help you to uh, take your image to a, uh, to a place where you thought you may never get to. And that's what I like to use them for. So I'm going to show you how to work with looks today. And also after you worked with a look, how can you uh, save it out and uh, make it your own look? And then you could use it uh, on other images. Hey, so without any further ado, let's get started. So today I'm working right from Topaz Studio 2. So we have a couple different ways of opening an image. We can come up here to File, and we can click uh, Open Image or Project. We can come to Open Recent. Or we can come to Open right here. Click this, Open a New Image, and your, um, uh, your file browser dialog opens up here. Or you can click Open right here. So there's different ways of opening up an image. And uh, let me see here. Let me find an image that I want to work with. This image right here, this uh, image of this barn right here. It's a really cool image. I'll give you a link for this image in the uh, description below in case you want to download this image and work along with me today. I don't know if this happens to you, but this happens to me a lot where I'll get a picture like this particular picture and I'll really like this picture and I'll think I really want to take it into a real artistic looking image and I don't know how to quite get there. Well, have no fear because Topaz Studio 2 will come to your aid here. There's a section called Add Look where you can add different looks from Topaz Studio 2. And these looks are uh, pre-adjusted looks that help you find something that may really work on your image. And then you could take that particular look and you can alter it and change it and make it your own. But all you need to do is come up here to add look and this dialog is going to open up for you here, which is really cool. Right now we're in this look category dreamy. Now there's a drop down menu here. So if you click it, you'll see you have all kind of different uh, looks in here, like all, which would be everything, your favorite, any one that you like, see these little hearts, if you click these arts, they will become favorites and they'll be found in the favorited section then at that point on. And then recently used, if you use something recently and you said, geez, I don't remember which one I just used, but it was awesome on my last picture. We'll go to recently used and you can find it really quick, which is nice. Then you have my looks where you'll find all the looks you've made. And then you have abstract artistic, man, just tons here. But right now we're under dreamy. So let's take a look at some of these. Let's go down through here. Like Blueberry Dream Girl, there's uh, Blush Haze. But look at the inspiration you can get here. You know, you're coming down through and you're saying, uh, Cool Fairy Wings looks really cool. So then you can click it and it'll give it a second here. It'll render it out because there may be several filters on here. We'll see how many filters are actually on this one. And here it is, but take a notice here. See where it says amount? Right now it's at 100 or 100%. You can take this amount slider and drag it back. You may say, you know what, that's a little too strong. So you may want to pull it back and say, you know what, right, right at around, uh, say, 63 or maybe 60 looks really good to me. And then you can click apply. So let's go ahead and click apply. And then you'll notice there's a group right here. And inside this group, you have all these different uh, filters. Like there's a color overlay. There's three different texture filters and a basic adjustment. Now you can come in here and click on any one of these filters like overlay right here. And you can see there's the color overlay right there. And it's in the overlay blend mode. And it's the opacity set to 53. You can alter that. You could take it the whole way up or you could draw it back even more. Or you might say, you know what, I don't think I need that overlay. So you could come here and click the eye here and shut it off and say, well, do I like it? 
Yeah, I actually do because it's giving me that overall nice light look to the image, so we'll keep it. But let's come to this next texture filter here, and you can see it's using this texture right here called Leak Fade. Now, you can come to this eye and shut that off and see what it's doing, and you might say, hmm, interesting. It's lightening the roof of the barn right here, which is kind of nice, but maybe a little too much, so... We could come here and let's take uh, click on texture and take its opacity and let's ease it back a little bit and say, you know, that looks really good right there. But you have all these different uh, things here. And if you say there's a tip, uh, one of these filters I don't like, let's go to this texture filter. Let's shut it off and turn it on and say, you know what, it's not doing too much. So let's get rid of it. Just click on the trash can and it's gone. But that's that's cool, right? That's kind of how you work with the. Uh, different looks you have this group and you can collapse collapse this group like this and Collapse everything and then you can add another filter on top of it or you can open up the group But the cool thing I like about it is when you have the group here You could you have this opacity right so you can say I want the opacity to go up full or I could pull it back and ease Everything off that's inside of that group, which is a really nice feature for now though Let's say yeah, this is cool, but I don't I'm not, I'm not feeling it right now. So let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, look. So come up to the uh, Cool Fairy Wings, come to the trash can, and let's click the trash can, and it's gone. And now let's go back to Add Look. And now let's say, you know what? Let's go to Category and click on the drop-down menu. And let's say, you know what? I want something artistic. So let's go into the artistic category here. We're not going to go into every category, but I just want you to know they're there. Now, it has to go ahead and uh, uh, make all these thumbnails for us. But you'll see in here we have all these different artistic-looking uh, thumbnails here. And just go down through them and find one that you really like. Like, like this Edward Hopper. I really like this. This looks cool. Expressionism looks kind of fun. Line and ink looks cool. I like liquid pencil, but see the inspiration you can get. So you just go down through and say, what is suiting my mood today? Like Surat Afternoon, I really like that. This simple sketch looks kind of fun. Here's one that looks more like a pencil sketch. These two actually soft sketch. And Watercolor 2, hmm, that's really pretty. Let's go ahead and click on Watercolor 2 and see what that looks like. Give it a second or two to render out. And yeah, that's that's really cool. I like it, watercolor too. Now, if I liked it, I could click apply. But before I click apply, I could pull the amount back. But even if I don't pull the amount back, you still can change that opacity later. But let's go to the one that I really liked. And that was the Edward Hopper, I think it was. And when you buy Topaz Studio 2, you're going to get all these looks in there with it. And... Here it is, Edward Hopper. Oh, by the way, if you know the name of a look, you can come up to this magnifying glass and click it and type that name of the look in. Like I could type in Edward Hopper and it would find it for me. Whoops, let's go back to that. Looks, here's Edward Hopper right here. So let's click on Edward Hopper and see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm going to stick with this one. I'm going to alter this look for you and then I'm going to save it out as a new look. Let's start out before we click apply by taking this amount slider. Let's move it to the left and ease off on that look a little bit. So we can bring back some of the original image back into it if we want to. Maybe something like right around there <laughs> looks like really, really pretty and I like that right there. So say we like that. So we're at like 53, like 53%. Then we can click apply. And when we click apply, we'll see, hey, there's only one filter in here, and that's the impression filter right here. But here's the group, Edward Hopper. So if I collapse it, you'll see it gets collapsed. I can open it back up. And if uh, if you look right here, here's the opacity. So I can come here and I can change it. You know, I could take it back up to 100%, or I could bring it back down to 53%, or even lower if I want, depending what kind of a look I'm looking for. But I think I'm going to go with 53%. I think that looks pretty pretty nice with this image so far and then we'll click on impression now you've seen me use the impression filter in the past and it's it's the impression filter so we can come in here we can see they're using this uh, stroke type 10 uh, we can see that they're using a uh, number of strokes medium so we might say let's try it on low and I highly recommend try the different settings because you want to make this look your own and remember we're going to save it out as a new look when we're done so Let's go to, I kind of like low, and I think I'm going to leave it on low. It, it gives me a little more of a, a little more arty, abstract look. 
Uh, then paint volume. Let's see here. The paint volume is at 0.75. What if we pull it back a little bit? Yeah, I kind of like it back a little bit. So maybe around there. And large brush volumes at zero. That's the default setting. And then we have paint opacity. If I pull this to the right, it'll make those paint strokes a little more bold. And I can pull them back. See, if I, if I make them bold, you can see some of these dark lines up here, which I don't like as much up in there. So I'm going to take this opacity and pull it back. So really study your image and see what's happening when you, when you, when you move these sliders around. So maybe somewhere right around in there. And then we can see stroke rotation is not being used, nor is stroke variation being used. And stroke width is set to this size up here, to the full size, which is the size one. So I could pull it back and alter the stroke size. And so, you know, I might just do that. I might pull that back. I can work the length. I like the length, I think. And then there's spill. Let me see. See some of these darker marks up in here. Let's see what happens if I take this spill and start to ease it back. Yeah, see if I ease that back, some of those lines go away. So the paint's not spilling out. See when I pull it up full? And it depends what look you want, but play with these sliders. I can't, uh, I can't say that enough. Really play around with these sliders. So I'm going to take that uh, spill and I'm going to pull it back a good bit. Maybe somewhere right around in there. And now after I've done that, I might come up to the paint opacity. And now I might pull my paint opacity back up a little bit more. Yeah, maybe a little bit right around in there. I don't mind a little bit of that spilling out in there. It's okay. But, oh man, just pull it back a little bit more. And then you have this smudge slider. If you want to add some smudge look to the painting, pull this up. See that right in here? See how that smudge? I like that. Just a little bit of smudge. Now, I could go crazy and pull that smudge way up like that. Okay, and it gets, uh, it gets pretty intense, but... I might just want a little bit of that smudge in there. Maybe maybe something like that. And I like what's happening to these trees back here. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of smudge in there. At this point, I think everything looks really good. Now we could come down and look at some of the other settings here. For instance, we could go to color and see what they're doing with color. And it looks like what they're doing here is they pull the overall saturation. See where it overall, they pull the overall saturation back. And we don't see any of these other um, adjustments with little lines under them. For instance, if I were to take, and here's what I mean by that. If I were to go to, say, orange here and make an adjustment, you'll notice I have a little white line under the overall adjustment and under orange. So being the fact that none of these other uh, blocks had a white line under it, I knew there was no adjustment on them. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and double click the orange saturation and set it back because I'm happy with the color. And I like the fact that they pulled the overall saturation back just a tiny little bit. So I'm good with that. And the other thing that they did with this, if we go under texture here, you'll notice they did add a bit of a texture. They added this canvas number four texture and here's the strength here. So if we zoom into this image, we can see that texture in there. And I like it. I think it's appropriate for this image. Everything's really good so far. And let me figure out what I want to add next to this. I think I might add a precision contrast or possibly a precision detail filter to it. Let's go ahead and uh, add a precision contrast. And let's play with that a little bit. Let's go with a little bit of micro. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. Let's add a little bit of micro. Yeah, I like what it's doing to these uh, boards on this house right here with a little bit of micro in there. So we'll add a little micro and how about a little bit of low? Yeah, let's do a little low in there and let's try medium. Watching these clouds over here. I don't want these clouds getting too dark. See, watch if I take that up, they get really dark. This area gets real dark down in there, so I don't want don't want that to happen. So Maybe somewhere right around there. Let's try high. Now my roof's getting too dark, so let's pull this back. Let's click this eye. Here's the before, and here's the after. I like that. Just a little bit of extra um, contrast in there. And let's add one more filter. Let's add a precision detail. And let's just give it a little overall small detail. Just a little bit, not much. And how about a little bit of medium? Not much. Something like that. 
And I think that looks pretty good. Now, if I feel that's too much, I'm going to take this opacity. Let's take it back a little bit. Maybe somewhere around a 72. Let's see. Here's a before. And here's an after. Yeah, and I like that. I might just take the opacity back just a little bit more. Take it back to around a 66. Here's a before. And here's an after. I think that looks good. Let's make our image a little smaller on the canvas here so we can really study it. Yeah, very cool. So, you know, I was uninspired. So we started out, the image looked like this, and now it looks like this, nice and painterly. So the looks really helped us today. Again, I was uninspired, but I went through some looks. I found a look that I liked. I altered it, and I played off that look and came up with this painting. Now, at this point of the uh, edit right now, I'd say that we're not really quite done yet, but I'm done far enough where I could save this out as a look because I think it's a great starting point for another image that I may want to be inspired off of in the future. So I want to save this out as a look. Before I save it as a look, I want to point something out that is kind of important here because remember I started out with a look, this Edward Hopper uh, look right here. And you remember when I started, let's click on this group here, Edward Hopper. I started with this at 53 because I like that. And that was cool. But whenever you save a look out, it doesn't look at groups that are inside the uh, look. It does, but it really looks at the filters that are inside the group and not the actual group itself. So here's what I need to do. If I want to save this out and get the exact representation of this look, what I need to do is take this um, Edward Hopper group opacity, take it up to 100%. Because remember, there was only one filter in here, and that was the impression filter. Now let's click on the impression filter. And right now it's at 100% as well. But you'll notice that now my look doesn't look right. So what I need to do is pull this back to 53. This is very important before I save this out. If I didn't do that and I chose this look on another image, the image would be over-processed. It wouldn't look like it does right here. It would look over-processed, and I hope that makes sense. Now we're ready to go ahead and save this look. So let's come up here to save look, click on this. Let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it uh, Oil Painting 2 because I have Oil Painting 1, I believe. So I'll call this Oil Painting 2. And we could give it a uh, look description if we wanted to. I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna click OK. And now that look is saved. I used to hear Bob Ross say this on his uh, the Joy of Painting episodes, he say, now it's time for your bravery test. Are you ready for your bravery test? And our bravery test is to, let's delete all these filters here. I'm just going to go ahead and trash can all these filters. And even this uh, group, which has the look in it, the Edward Hopper look. And now let's come up here to uh, add look. And we're going to go into my looks. And you have all the different looks in here. But here's my looks right here. Make sure you have that set. And here's oil painting too. So let's click on that and see what we get. And there's our image right there. At 100%. Okay. And if we click apply, we'll see right now we have a group called oil painting too. But inside it we have an impression filter, a precision uh, contrast filter, and a precision detail filter. Let's go to the impression filter. Now you'll notice the opacity for the impression filter is at 53%. Because remember, I altered that. If I wouldn't have done that, then the uh, when I applied this look, it wouldn't have looked 100% accurate. It would have been over-processed. As I said a little earlier, I'm not quite done with this image. And if you'll recall, we started out inside of Topaz Studio 2. So now all I need to do is come up here to File and click on Save Project As. And let's give it a name. I'm just saving it to my desktop. I'm going to call it uh, Barn Painting. All right, Barn Painting, and click on Save. Now it saves it as a project. So when I open it back up again, uh, it'll come with all these layers intact, and I can continue to work on it. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. So today I wanted to show you how we can use uh, looks inside of Topaz Studio 2. It's a great way... If you're uninspired, if you don't know how to take your image, what direction to take it to, there are a ton of looks in there that you can go through and, and then you can find one that you kind of like and then you can take it and alter it and add to it. And then you could save that out as a, as a look of your own and then you could use that on other images. So it's really cool and it's really fun. So 
If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.